He says this, the thought process that went into building these applications, Facebook being the first of them, was all about, get this, how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible? And that means, and that means that we need to sort of give you a dopamine hit every once in a while because someone liked or commented on a phone or a post or whatever. Our attention spans are slowly shrinking, statistics would say, and dopamine or escape with a screen, I would argue, are our drug of choice. That when we feel pain, or we feel sadness, or we feel angry, or you feel stressed, or you feel upset, subconsciously, maybe now, you got to pick this up. You got to get home and put on Netflix. You got to grab a screen. You've got to escape instead of facing it. You need that dopamine hit to make you feel better. In fact, I would argue that being connected, there's been some really great things about it. But the thing that being connected hasn't done is it hasn't produced more meaning. Being more connected hasn't produced more meaning in your life. It's maybe helped you connect with some people you wouldn't normally stay connected with, but overall, nobody says, man, I'm, I'm scrolling through TikTok every day and the doom scrolling is just producing such deep meaning in my heart. <laughs> it's just making me become such a better person. When I watch these people, you know, building cabins or seeing how many straws they can stick up their nose, like that's really <laughs> feeding my soul. We're losing our souls I would argue, distracting ourselves into spiritual desolation. Into a spiritual barrenness in our lives. Another way to say it is, our social media feeds are full, but our souls are empty. What's the answer to all this? What do we do with that in our lives? What do we do with the fact that you are never alone? That you are always connected all the time? What do you do with that well the answer is i'm going to argue today silence and solitude 